On today's episode, I am actually going to be working on setting up a Floyd Rose on a Jackson guitar. And then next week, you'll be able to come back and see Corwin taking this apart and cutting it out and having the body ready to go. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. If you have been frustrated trying to set up a Floyd Rose, today might be a good day for you to watch as we set up a Floyd Rose on a guitar. Gonna take just a little break this week from building guitars. Set up a Floyd Rose for a young guy in town who has been having trouble getting his set up. I've known this to be an issue for a lot of different people, especially if they're trying to string it up for the very first time and intonate it. It's a little bit tricky. Thanks for joining us, guys. He tried setting it up and wasn't able to get it set up, intonated, all of that. For the most part anymore, I usually go with just a hard tail. I don't do a, a Floyd Rose anymore. It's been a long time since I've had a Floyd Rose. Last one I had was on my uh, Wolfgang that I had. I kind of miss having a Floyd Rose, at least having one around. But in the years of playing with the Floyd Rose, some of the things that I kind of figured out, one, if I ever change guitar strings on a Floyd Rose, I just change one string at a time. I don't take all the strings off at once because it takes a whole lot more work, I think, to set it up when you do it that way. If you change the weight of the string, you're going to have to adjust your Floyd Rose. I don't know exactly what we're getting into here. This is uh, the first I've really looked at the guitar. First thing I had to do is he didn't actually have the, the bar for the Floyd Rose, so went to a guitar store and picked one of those up. It's not going to probably be pretty to start with, uh, the way it sounds. I've seen other guys where they'll get the Floyd Rose, they'll get it all strung up and maybe <laughs> it's all sitting up like this. It's way stretched out. One of the other things that I do as I set it up is I these fine tuners down here. Now, if, if you're new to guitars and you don't know how Floyd Rose works, maybe I should just point out quick. We have a locking nut down here. So these will stay loose we run our strings through it, we, we string it all up, and then we keep these loose to begin with, and we tune it down here on the headstock. Then we tighten down these bolts here on the nut, and those will hold the string tight. And then down here, we can fine tune from there on out uh, with these little round You know, you see that on some violins too, don't you? Sometimes they have the fine tuners down there. So it takes a little bit of work to get set up, making sure the springs are at the right tension of where they're supposed to be, and we'll see if we can get this playing well. Who knows what we're going to get to, action height-wise and all of that, we'll, we'll just have to see uh, how it's set up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is, because we've got a lot of tension on here, is I'm going to remove a couple of these springs, just to give me a little less tension on there so it's easier for me on this side. We'll be putting those back on in a little while. We use a number three Allen wrench to loosen up these bolts here, which are gonna be the tighteners, the locks for the strings as we put it in. Because that's one of the things about a Floyd Rose is it locks the string on both ends of the guitar. That helps with it to stay in tune. On this end of the guitar, also using a number three metric, I'm going to loosen those. And for now, I'm just going to take these off and I'm going to replace those in the same way that they are currently. I'm just going to set those aside for now. 
while we have the guitar apart, since all of the strings are already off of it, now's a good time for me to just use a little linseed oil and intend to this fretboard just a little bit. I want to get a little moisture into that fretboard. It's also the time to check these nuts holding the tuning machines, make sure those are all tight. Sometimes they come loose. Okay, I've got my one spring put back on there. Need to have one spring at least in there just to hold it in place, but uh, that makes it real easy for me to, to adjust it to get it strung up here. I asked him what weight of string he used and he said 10s and so I'm going to string it up with my favorite DR dime bag 10 to 46. Those are the strings I personally like. I like the way they seem to hold tune better for me. Um, and yeah, just the feel. I don't know, they've just got, you, you can't find something you like with strings and then you kind of stick to it. I've tried other, other strings but I really like these and I don't find them everywhere uh, so I get them online typically. The first crazy thing you have to do with these Floyd Rose tremolos is to cut off ball end of the string because we're going to drop this right into here, push it down till it stops. I'm going to use my number three, my number three Allen wrench, tighten it down, give it a little tug, make sure it's good and tight, then we'll go to the other end. Okay, then down on this end, he's got the reverse headstock, so little different than what I typically work with, but we want to just bring this low E into here. All right, so on this reverse headstock, just getting this round around, two times around there. Now with the strings in place and very loose, they're very loose at this point, I'm going to set these back into place and just get them started, but I am not going to tighten them down. Now with the strings in place, I'm going to replace these springs. I'm going to, for now, I'm going to put them exactly where they were. Okay, I've got it so that it's in tune now. These are still loose down here, <clears throat> but I can already tell a couple of things. One, with these tens on there, this is setting up a little bit higher than what I would like it to be sitting up or tilted forward. So we're going to tighten up the springs on the back a little bit. But the other thing is... So I've got uh, way too much height up off the fretboard here. I'll just use this gauge so you can see. We are, we are as high as the highest setting here. And I want to bring it down to about in here if I can. So that's going to take a little bit of work to adjust. I'll be using an Allen wrench on these posts to bring the whole Floyd Rose down a little bit. I'm going to try that first. And I want to be able to do that without having a bunch of buzz ringing on any portion of the neck. So I may have to adjust the truss rod as well. Uh, but let's just start with adjusting these. Well, I seem to be as low as this is going to go there. Here now. Well, it's definitely better than it was. I would still like to see it a little lower if possible. I'm noticing that this post is up a little bit high. Well, it's definitely higher than what this one is. So that's one of the reasons why that's stopping there and I'm not able to lower this any further. I want to be able to lower that yet. So I'm going to see what I can do to fix this post. First, I'm going to remove this portion. All right, that's all it took was one good whack and that post went down in. It had been pulling out. Okay, it goes way down there without pulling that up. So, all right, that should help a lot. One of the nice things about these flight rows, when you got both sides locked in, I can essentially get this rod in here and so I can just remove it out and pull it back in. 
So now I just need to put my strings back or my springs back on. So again, I'm going to put those springs back exactly like they were before. So now I've got this really actually quite low, maybe even too low, but we're going to find out here. But I'm going to tune it up again really quick. Just want to touch base on the fact that so you get E A D, you know, G B E. So right now I'm tuning this all the way up to at the moment I'm tuning it up to F. I'm tuning this one up to let's see instead of A I'm up to B flat. This one I'm at D right now. I'm gonna get just make it a little bit sharp once. Okay, now we're gonna get to nope oh, that was way too high. There we go. A flat. Now let me get these two tuned up. And I'm actually going to tune this one right up to B, just a little bit sharp. Because every time you add tension to one string, it's taking, it's making the other ones more slack with these Floyd rows. So you just tune and retune and retune. Okay, I'm up to E. Now let's see where I'm at with this low E, which I had tuned up to F. Ah, oh, it's almost right there. Okay, I'm going to just, just a little sharper now. Here, let's. There's my A, just about on. Get my D in there. And you just keep going back and forth till they all kind of finally even out and they'll all be in, in, all in tune using the headstock tuners. Wow, and that action is incredibly low now. Can I play all the notes. I might be good. Well, that one's got to come up just a little bit, maybe. Yep, so we're going to have to raise that up just slightly. Just slightly. So, see if I got my notes. There's no rattle. The little bit of rattle that you're hearing right there is from the loose nut. Yeah, I haven't tightened those down, so. That's what rattle you hear. Well, now having it all strung up and having the strings at a pretty good spot as far as the action on it, and it's in tune down here, the next thing is intonation. And I've already checked and realized that the E is definitely way sharp here, but remember my play an E there and then play an E here? You can hear that's really, that's way off. So in tune there, out of tune there. So we've got to intonate it. He was right, it is not intonated properly. So we're gonna work on that. Uh, so the E, I check my E, make sure that I'm right on with my E. And then I'm gonna check it at the 12th fret. Not pushing too hard because I don't want to push it out of tune. So I'm just gonna barely fret it. And it's quite sharp. Now instead of going to changing that string, I'm going to check all my strings. I know this one needs to come back, but because I've got to retune it and up and down over and over and over again, I want to try and get as close as I can the first time. So my E is way sharp. My A even sharper than where the E was at. D's a little worse. That's got to come further back than what those two do. Also sharp. So they're all going to have to move. So I'm just going to adjust all of them to start with. In order to adjust the intonation on the Floyd Rose, I'm going to have to loosen up these bolts and get this all pulled back. And uh, right now they're all forward, and so that's why, partially why it's so intonated. So I need to loosen all of my strings, loosen them so they're quite slack, and then I'll, and then I'll move those. I take some of the pressure off this by pushing down on the bar and then that allows me to slide it back then I tighten it up where I want it 
they were all quite sharp, all similarly sharp to the same point. So I'm putting them all back close to the same point. Um, that B was way sharp, so I'm going to put that back just a little bit further than the other ones. And that one wasn't even tightened down, so... Okay. Oh, that one is stripped. Well, that makes for an interesting thing then. No wonder it wasn't tightened down. It's stripped out. I'm going to take it out completely and see if I can see whether is it the threads inside or would it be these threads that are stripped out. These threads are looking pretty good, which is very unfortunate because that would mean that the threads inside the Floyd Rose are stripped. What I can do to make this work, I'm going to have to get a little creative. I'm going to use a tap and die and I will re-thread that for a little bit larger nut than what this one is. I'm going to have to find a nut that's going to work there in order to get this intonated. I mean, we could put it in here and it could come back. Oh, but wait. It looks like there is a second hole back further. So if I move this, ooh, this might be just fine. There's a second hole in there. That might be our save, saving grace right there. I did not know that these came with two holes. If I can tighten it in this one, it's threading, and I've got it moved back. Tight. Beautiful. Guys, I didn't know that there are two holes. Perfect. Thank you, Jackson Floyd Rose licensed tremolo. So I moved it to the back one and we're good. I got that. So now I'm going to retune it and see if we are then uh, see how close we are for intonation. Okay, I've tuned it up again. Go up here. We're closer, but it's still out. Okay, so the only one that's intonated properly now is this high E string. The one where I had to move it back further and use that second hole. Uh, all of these are still too sharp, so I'm going to have to move them all back. Uh, I'm going to end up, I'm pretty confident, I'm going to have to move every one of these to the next hole in there, which I'm so thankful that they've got both of those in there because that's going to make this intonation, intonation possible. Uh, otherwise, I'd run out of space here. So really glad for that, but yet yeah, we're still a little bit sharp. They're much better but not quite there yet. Okay, and now have it intonated. So it's in tune, it's intonated down here. Sounds pretty decent. So now I will tighten up the nut. And once that is tightened up, now, if you're used to using a hardtail and not having a Floyd Rose and not doing this, don't accidentally make the mistake of trying to tune it using the tuners there because now if you were to tune it here uh, you're going to end up breaking a string. Um, so now it's going to be a little bit slightly out of tune and that's where these fine tuners come in. So I will just make sure we're fine tuned here. And I usually in setting these up I put these at about halfway so they can go up or down. Well, let's go run this through an amplifier and see how it sounds that way. So very quickly, just some clean strumming here. Let's give the whammy bar a try. Before I kick on the distortion and do it that way, let's just try it so it's clean and you can hear it. So back. Put a 
it to the test. Still in tune. We're doing pretty good then. That was the issue. He was having a hard time keeping it in tune, getting it tuned, getting it intonated. Action is good and low now on it. Sounds good. Now, let's have some fun. I will do something Van Halen-esque, but wrongly, because I don't want to get demonetized, which I'm not even monetized yet, so I don't even know if I need to worry about that. But I'll do something of the sort, but a little bit different or wrong. So we'll just throw on, throw some distortion on there. Floyd Rose is you can do those dive bombs and it stays in tune. to him. He works at a hardware store in town so let's go see if he's over there now and uh, see what he thinks. All right so he's here at the store but he's a little bit shy about the whole filming thing so I'm just gonna bring it to him. Uh, I don't want to bother him too much here at work but uh, yeah thanks for joining us guys hope this helped out please like and subscribe and if this helped you out at all from getting your own floyd rose set up let me know make a comment or something if i've done something that you would have done different let me know that too that'd be great we'll catch you later guys yeah he just said that he gets a little nervous playing in front of people and including even playing in front of his parents so he wasn't thrilled about being on the camera which is just fine that's that's not a problem but I think he did give me permission that I could show you a picture of his tattoo that he got after Eddie Van Halen passed away. Kind of a sweet tattoo, huh?